guys, welcome to Friday Waffle. Um, I trust you've all had a nice uh, week, if that's the right word to use. I don't think there is such a thing as a good week. It's uh, more looking forward to the weekend, like I am. Um, I've had quite a busy week. Uh, my running has been getting back in track, thank God. Um, I'm doing, uh, I think I've mentioned before, my running, my training hasn't been going that great this year. Um, it's probably been the sort of poorest it's been since I started running f four years ago, I think it was. Yeah, four years ago. But uh, I've decided that uh, I'm going to be giving the West Highland Way race a crack, which is in three weeks' time. So it's uh, 95 miles, so I thought I'd better get my arse in gear. Um, I went out on Monday and I ran from, um, I ran 20 miles I think it was, so it's getting getting there, so I'm delighted to, delighted to see that, can kind it of get better, so hopefully my, my double chin's starting to disappear a wee bit. Um, what have I been doing from a gaming point of view, uh, have I been playing anything? Yeah, what, I was playing something, what was I playing? Um, I was ah, I'll tell you exactly what I've been playing. I've been playing Alien Isolation on the PC. Um, I did do a wee kind of sort of a test video to see how well my my computer could actually record a full screen game, and I've got to say I was quite suitably impressed with how it turned out. Um, I mean I think it's running pretty smooth, even with me talking kind of thing. So delighted with that. But uh, retro gaming wise, not been playing. Not been playing very much. I did uh, John John Studley, um, Pac-Man Extraordinaire. He's going to be back on a Sunday for part two of his interview. So I'm looking forward to speaking to John. Now John actually gave me a link um, to a chap that makes sort of bespoke uh, USB arcade controllers. Excuse me. So I got in touch with the guy. And uh, he let me see some of the stuff that he's made, and I've got to say they're absolutely gorgeous looking. Uh, he'll make them just exactly as you want it. So I've uh, asked him if he could make me, I know I've got my main cab there, but I've asked him if he could make me a twin stick Robotron. And apparently it's, uh, you know, it's there's a special kind of joystick that's got this sort of, it's got an insert type thing, so it's more... It's got a kind of better feel to it sort of thing, so he's going to make me a bespoke Robotron controller which I can use uh, downstairs on the PC, so I'm really looking forward to getting that. It's probably going to take him a couple of weeks to make it, um, but I'll be sure to sort of do a, a main master look at it when, when I get this thing. Um, yeah, topic wise, what has a hazel on every bite? Um, only had only got one question uh, this week. I've got a couple um, to talk about myself. New games and old systems. Yeah, I did a, a look at of uh, Juno first on Atari twenty six hundred, and anybody that's that's watched the video will probably agree with me when they say for an Atari twenty six hundred game it looks bloody amazing. I mean seriously, um, it's got the speed, it's got the smoothness, it's got the the sound, it's got the graphics, it's got the color. You know, to, if you showed somebody that, they would probably think it was like on a, an Atari 8-bit or something. Uh, well, maybe the 2600 is an 8-bit, but you know, you probably wouldn't think it was on the Atari uh, 2600. Um, really incredible. And what intrigues me is why why are they able to put... Um, there's my daughter singing. Why are they able to make a game like that um, now, when you know, back in 1979, you just didn't think that kind of thing was possible. I suppose it comes down to the fact that they've got 30 years experience. You've got communities of people sharing information, sharing tips, and that kind of stuff. But you know, when you see what they can do, even the Spectrum, they came up with some uh, new system on the Spectrum where they can have is it 16 colours or something? It just looks incredible. Super high res graphics. Um, yeah, you know, there, there, then there's, um, what would you call it, there's Space Harrier and Atari, but, you know, there's some amazing games coming out for really old and clunky systems, and then, uh, in fact, one of uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Kevin, down the rabbit hole, he was, uh, 
he very kindly showed me a video of a game, what's it called, is it Typhoon I think it is, which is basically a Tempest clone on the, uh, the, oh, the 2600 on the Vectrex because somebody was asking me what game would I like to see on an old system and I think I mentioned Tempest as well as Asteroids on the Vectrex and he very kindly showed me a link to, or he, he made a video for uh, this Typhoon which looks really cool, it looks quite a slow version of Tempest but looks the dog's bollocks but anyway yeah back in topic um, it just it makes you wonder if they had the knowledge and ability to put out games like you know Juno first on old systems would we be would we have had such a big turnaround in, in hardware um, I'm not too sure I suppose it's like anything, you know, there's there's more than one way to write a game and it's it's one of these things where it's just through trial and error and using tips and seeing what other people do, dissecting other people's games that programmers are able to push the boundaries. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I suppose back in 1979, they only had, they had to use their own imagination um, they might have been able to look at other games and maybe if you're lucky you'd have the instruction manual and possibly you might have some clever person that had written a book on how to do sprites and graphics and that so you know it was very much a cottage industry people were finding their way with games so I suppose you know um, people now have got a huge advantage um, over what the, what was available back in back in the day but yeah it just it gets me thinking about you know could other systems like the PlayStation, you know, PlayStation 2, um, Commodore Amiga, I would love to see some, someday, you know, return to the Commodore Amiga and just knock us out with some amazing game. Um, I'm sure that's possible. Um, in fact, I'll need to Google it actually, you know, I'm, I'm not up to speed with any new games on the Amiga, but I'm sure, you know, in the right hands, with the right skill, they could probably put out some amazing software. So, yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say on that one. Um, Lawn Boys Post 1975, Dave, um, I don't know whether this was his creation, but he, he was asking the question, do you remember renting videos from video a video store? Now I did talk about this, I can't remember when it was, it wasn't that long ago, um, and the answer to that is absolutely. Um, anybody, I don't know, I keep using this same turn of phrase, anybody under the age of 30 probably would be wondering what the hell we're talking about, you know. Back in 1980, 1979, 80, whatever it was, we didn't have online, I mean the, the internet didn't exist, so there was no such thing as streaming video, there was no such thing as Netflix or YouTube, God forbid, um, there was nothing like that. So the only way we could watch films was th three ways. You would either go to the cinema to watch a film, then you would have to wait about five years um, to pass before the BBC or ITV would be able to show it on TV and I can always remember as a kid you know the, um, weeks before Christmas they would uh, you'd get the, the Radio Times or was it the TV Times I think it was and that basically told you what was coming up what was going to be in the TV over the Christmas period and the first thing you used to do is turn to Christmas Day and see what big films were coming out so, you know, back in, I don't know when it would be, 1982, Star Wars, wow! You know, you have to remember, you either saw it in the cinema, or you didn't see it at all. You had to wait years for it to come into TV. And then, early 80s, I think, or was it late 70s, I can't remember, um, they invented this thing called the video recorder. And basically, what it was, it was a machine, um, not like Sky Plus, it took these big, massive, chunky videotapes, um, which are big, I sound stupid even describing this, but I'm sure there's some people watching this video who've never heard of a, don't know what a video tape is, it's just, it basically is a big tape with a kind of magnetic tape in it. There was two versions, there was the VHS and there was Betamax. Now apparently Betamax, um, it would be like the PlayStation 2, or it would be like Windows and uh, iOS or Apple. Um, Betamax was apparently the better system, but VHS, go into the market far sooner and Betamax eventually died. So yeah, in the sort of late 70s, um, yeah it would be the late 70s, 
there was what we called video shops sprung up and these were little back back street shops um, usually independent that sold, they didn't sell they would uh, hire out videos now this was like you know going back to what I was talking about you know you could either see a film I mean there was only three channels on TV so films were virtually non-existent other than at Christmas time so suddenly we had this outlet where you could, you could pay a membership fee, go along to the video shop and you could basically browse all these films that you'd never seen before. Um, as a, a kid growing up in the 80s, it was super exciting going along with your mate. I mean, you, you, we would be able to watch the, the classic films from the 80s were things like Quadrophenia, The Warriors, Animal House, um, Jaws. Then if you were really brave, you could get things like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Exorcist. These were all films that were, there was films that were banned because they were classed as, you know, video nasties. And yet, probably looking at something like, uh, I don't know, The Exorcist, it's tame as anything compared to probably something like Saw or, I don't know, or these other insidious, or these films that are really, really kind of common now. Even stuff like Final Destination's probably got far more gore in it. But uh, yeah, you would go along on a Friday night um, with, your, with your pals and you would, uh, you would hire tapes. Um, they obviously had uh, sort of adult tapes as well, but you know, being a kid there was no way we could possibly rent it. But you used to go in, you would be, these, these video shops tended to be quite dull, um, dark affairs, almost like a, kind of an old arcade. They were usually a bit smelly, the carpet was always a bit dirty looking. And all you had with these videos, rows and rows of videos, and uh, you always got a sore neck because you were always up looking at the top shelf of the adult films thinking, I wish I could hire that, but there was no way you were going to get given it. Um, the funny thing is, I can always remember, they used to sometimes sell videotapes, so you could maybe buy Jaws, and without a shadow of a lie, or a word of a lie I should say, to buy a film, it was like ninety pounds. Yeah, that's what it cost. It wasn't like twelve ninety nine that it is nowadays. Um, films were like full price. They were like almost a hundred pounds for a video. Um, but you know that was the only way you would ever physically get to own a video. This is before you could go into into I don't know order online. This is before you could go into HMV and pick up a videotape. The only way to watch films was to actually hire them. Um, but uh, yeah, it was great, and I can always remember our local one, um, it was just next door to a taxi office and they used to have a Donkey Kong arcade machine as well, which was good. But yeah, you always felt dirty going into these wee video shops, but they were exciting because it was all like banned stuff that you used to get, and like I say, you used to have under-the-counter tapes, which uh, I never got to, get, got to take sort of thing, but I can always remember a funny story which I've probably told before. My mum, um, God rest her soul, you know, miss her like crazy. She she used to love like uh, sort of true films, you know, like uh, I don't know, suspense detective type films. So I can always remember this one day. Um, my dad hated watching films, so my mum and I, I think it was one Friday night, we went up to the video shop, and she said, "Right, son, we'll get a film that we both want to watch." And we're looking through and she came, she shouted me across, she said, what about this one? And it was called Killer Nun. Um, and it, she looked at the back of it and it's like this uh, true story, was, you know, this true story about a nun who uh, went on to murder X number of people, blah, 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 a thrilling, uh, you know, film, etc, etc. So we, took, we decided on the Killer Nun, took it up the road and uh, got some sweeties, Maltesers, whatever it was, cup of tea put the video on, me and my mum sitting watching it and then there was a, a nude scene and I can remember it getting quite quiet in the, in the room I don't think she, she was probably more embarrassed than me then there was like a lesbian scene as well and uh, <laughs> at, that, <coughs> at that point my mum, oh this is a lot of rubbish and she switched it off and uh, that was that and if I recall I think I got up in the middle of the night and uh, sneaked upstairs and watched the rest of it. So yeah, there was uh, it was quite a graphic film. In fact, it turns out that was one of the, the sort of banned video nasties later on. 
um, but probably watching it now it would be absolutely bollocks but to a, um, a 14 year old um, growing up boy um, seeing things like you know lesbians getting it together on a videotape was uh, was quite thrilling so yeah I remember that one well but yeah video video stores were, were great fun they were like this is, they were like arcades they were dark they were seedy they were dirty you know um, but it was great and then they kind of evolved you know it, they went from being the wee independent video shops and then there was like I'm trying to think was it Global Global was a, a, a sort of chain that sprung up there was Blockbuster, which was the most recent one. I think that was that actually closed down just maybe three, four years ago. So I don't think there's such a thing as a video shop now. But yeah, there was a series of these kind of big chains opened up. And it, it kind of lost the appeal because instead of going in and just looking among, amongst all these films, you went into Global and you'd have like 10 Jurassic Park 2s, 10 Independence Days... 10 Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, so it was like, kind of like going to a McDonald's, it just it lost the whole the whole appeal of uh, what the video shops were back in the 80s, but I said, yeah, I can remember they also used to uh, hire out video games as well, uh, but like I said, when these big kind of uh, chains opened up, all the smaller kind of uh, video uh, stores closed down, but yeah, that was a great time, great time to be alive, it was super exciting, and uh, you know, Going up with your mates and you know we used to, I think we hired Quadrophenia three or four times and we'd get up down the road and sit and watch it and it was just it was excellent so anyway we need to pause this a second guys okay right uh, I've only really one other thing I'm going to talk about um, oh beg your pardon just a, a simple text um, yeah shout outs on the YouTube community now. If you're watching this, chances are you know what a shout-out is. A shout-out is usually whereby a more popular uh, YouTube channel will, uh, will shout-out or uh, talk about a smaller channel, usually related to the same kind of thing. Um, now, I for one haven't received, I haven't had a shout-out, I've only had a shout-out I think on one channel. And that was Steve Benway, and that would be last year. Now, I've noticed you don't really get shout outs as much now, um, which I think is a shame because as anybody that, that makes video game channels um, or YouTube channels know, it's really, 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 it's very time consuming and it takes a long, long time before you start to pick up viewers um, you know it really is really does and shout outs are a fantastic way of getting exposure uh, bringing exposure to small smaller channels I mean I think when Steve uh, Ben we did my shout out I think I was on about 35 subscribers um, which doesn't sound a lot but you know when you first start off um, it's Every single subscriber you get is, is, is hard, hard fought. Yeah, I think when I got my, my shout out, I was on th about 30 subscribers. And within about a week, I'd gone up to about 60. So Steve, a shout out on a big channel like Steve's was worth about, you know, it got me about 20, 30 subscribers. Which, when you've only got 30 to begin with, it's a massive thing. Now, you know, there's, there's a lot of people... Um, we're debating about shout outs you know I know Steve used to have a problem because some people would actively ask for a shout out um, and you know I can kind of Steve wasn't too keen on that and I can kind of get that you know if somebody's asking you for something then you're more inclined to probably say well no I'm not going to do it but I think uh, shout outs are important you know if w <laughs> sometimes Maybe I'm, I've got this wrong. I sometimes think that there's a slight competitiveness with the YouTube community. I'm not saying that other channels don't want other channels to do well. I mean, at the end of the day, I like most of the the, the sort of the, the video game community. We don't monetize our videos. We don't. I don't make any money in my videos at all. 
Um, I'm not really interested in that, you know, unless I was going to be making serious money then I'd think about it, but that's not the case, so I don't make any money, I've got nothing to gain um, by having loads of subscribers or less subscribers, nothing at all, but I sometimes do detect a slight, maybe it's unfounded sort of jealousy from some people, maybe they don't want other channels to do well, I don't know, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, and I really mean that, there's nobody that I know um, the, the retro gaming community um, is an excellent community, you know, everybody's really friendly, everybody supports each other, but I do think we could all do more to try and help grow each other's channels, you know, a bigger channel, it's no skin off their nose to mention a smaller channel, um, and I do think, you know, for, for, for all the, you know, couple of minutes it'll take a large channel to do a shout out, it can have a big impact on a smaller channel. Now I'm kind of getting to the stage here that I'm, there's a person that I want to do a shout out. I've only done one shout out ever and that was for uh, Amiga Old School Adam um, who I can heartily recommend. Adam's a good top bloke, has an excellent channel devoted pretty much to the Amiga. Now I know when I gave Adam a shout out, that's the only shout out I've done. I mean I'm a, a very, very, very small channel um, compared to most. And I think I got maybe Adam three or four um, subscribers, but when you've not got many, that's all. That all kind of helps. But yeah, the person that I wanted to um, talk about is uh, down the rabbit hole, Kevin. Now Kevin's been watching my videos and posting on my videos for about I would say six months. He's always been good at you know contributing to questions and talking about it. I mean I look upon the whole thing as a kind of community, but. Um, I decide, I, I mean, I must admit, I'll, I'll confess, most of my subscribers, I mean, I, I, I don't, well, in fact, I'll take that back, most of my subscribers, I'll usually click on their YouTube channel to see if they've got a channel themselves, and most of them that I look at, they don't actually put up videos, so you're not going to subscribe to something when there's no videos getting put up, but I clicked on Kevin's channel last week, and, eh, uh, I was very, very surprised, I don't mean that in a bad way, I was surprised in a good way to discover that Kevin seems like a really, really decent bloke. Um, now, apologies Kevin if I've got this wrong, but I'm guessing you're from America. You've got a really professional, um, nice sounding accent. You know, you've, you sound like a lot of the bigger YouTubers, American YouTubers, you sound very, very professional. Not like me, the wee Scotsman with a wee gruff voice. Um, but I've been going through your videos, and uh, I've got to say, you're, I mean, you've got quite a lot in quite a lot in common with me. The stuff that you put out, your channel's got a lot of bits and pieces. There's there's kind of gameplay videos. You even look at food at some point. You're looking at Star Warsy type stuff. Um, you've got all manner of kind of stuff in there. Um, you've got quite a bit about Vectrex, which is a um, personal favourite of mine's. But, you know, I've watched a few of your videos and I've got to say, they're excellent, they're really, really good. And I was a bit dismayed to see that you've only got, I think it's 51 subscribers, and I don't mean that again, I don't mean to knock that, but, you know, there's a perfect example of a channel, to my mind, deserves to be um, looked at by more people. So, I'm going to post uh, Kevin's link down below. Anybody that's watching this, if you like the stuff I put out, then I think you'll enjoy Kevin's. Go and support him. I mean, this is what this is what this whole thing's all about. It's helping each other to grow. Um, the more we grow, because if you don't get any feedback, you don't get any subscribers, then it's easy. I know. I mean, I've been there myself. It's easy to think, what's the point? I'm making these videos for myself and just give up. But honestly, go and check out Kevin's channel. He's really good. He's funny. His his videos are really well put together. I mean, he done he done a cracking. Uh, video all about, um, I made a comment about um, I would love to see asteroids on the Vectrex and Kevin did a sort of a, a look at of three sort of asteroid type clones on the Vectrex but just your your manner, the way you talk, you know, I'm, uh, it took me, I mean I'm far from professional but it took me a hell of a long time to sort of sound half passable but you just seem to have a natural talent to kind of talk um, and sound really good. 
So yeah, go and check out Kevin's channel. His name is uh, Down the Rabbit Hole, and I said I'm going to pop the link down below. So please go and check out Kev's channel. If you like it, subscribe to it. If you don't like it, then don't subscribe. But uh, I think if you like this this channel, I think you'll quite enjoy Kevin. So go and support him. And uh, yeah, this is a kind of putting it out to the community. If if you see a video channel that you like, then please please tell people about it. You know, at the end of the day, you know whether it's video games. If I if I play a game or have a piece of hardware which what I personally think is great, I'll tell people about it. I'll say this game's great. Go and get it. It's the same with TV. You know, you watch um, Breaking Bad. I went out and told loads of people about it. I said this is a great TV program. Go and watch it. Should be the same with these uh, YouTube channels. So I ask you if you've got any channels that you watch, some of the smaller channels that you think you know deserve more publicity. Tell people about it. Um, because I've got quite a small uh, list of subs people I've subscribed to and I'd love to know there's probably a million other channels out there that are worthy of uh, watching so guys please if you know of any smaller channels give them a wee helping hand we all need it you know um, we are a community after all and it's about helping each other to kind of promote this utterly fantastic hobby of ours so go and check out Kev's channel right enough of that um, now Kev's asking he's only got the one the one question that he's asking me here um, Hey Alan, I don't know if you play many fighting games but when you do in a console do you use a standard controller or a fight stick? Hmm Now I've mentioned this before Kevin um, The fighting genre is a genre I, I think and I know I should love you know, I mean I loved I love, I didn't love, I love Year Kung Fu, I think it's an amazing game, love it to bits. I love the fighting individual, different people getting to the next, um, get to the next stage. I love Exploding Fist, um, so yeah, I'm a massive fan of beat em up games. But for some strange reason, um, that appeal seems to have diminished when they became more... Uh, complicated when they became more uh, in depth I mean things like Street Fighter there's just too many moves for my liking uh, and I'm a complete walnut when it comes to stuff like that so when I play a game like Street Fighter or Tekken or whatever it is Virtua Fighting, all these games I tend just to mash the buttons and there's really no skill I keep meaning to Oh, I mean, I would, I'll rephrase, I don't mean to do it, but I keep saying to myself I should really take the time and invest some time in learning how to play one of these games because I mean I've got I've got a mate Andy, a uh, sick boy, who is absolutely awesome at fighting games and to watch him it's like poetry in motion, you know, you'd realise that these games are a craft, you know, it's not about just mashing buttons, it's actually about knowing what you're doing pulling off special moves and all this kind of stuff so it's a genre I would love 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 to actually get good at but I just I don't see it happening and with that in mind I don't use I mean I've got a, a crack in there I've got one of these uh, is it Hori H-O-R-I fighting sticks which I got for was it for Street Fighter 4? I can't remember. Um, it works on the it works on the PC and it also works on the Xbox 360. But I just don't use it because I don't play fighting games. I don't see any real reason to use it. So if I do play a beat em up, it will generally just be using the the controller, the standard uh, gamepad. But like I said, it's a genre that I, I really, really don't play. I would love to play. I'd love to get good at it. Um, but the bottom line is I'm just too bloody lazy so yeah and I think that is it yeah that, that is it guys I think it's a fairly short Friday waffle um, oh only one further thing um, hang on a second pickups what did I get I this retro for sale channel which I go on about all the time um, there's a chap, Chris Wilkins, you may be familiar with him, Chris does a lot, used to do a lot of the big replay events, not replay, a lot of the, is it revival events, I think it is, kind of retro gaming um, type events. He writes a series of books, 
Um, there was one which was called the Ocean Story, which is basically the Ocean Story is the story of Ocean, the eight and sixteen bit publisher from the eighties. Now Chris was doing a deal on it's called the story of the Sinclair Spectrum in pixels. Now it's a really really pretty looking book. It's heavy. I've not actually started reading it. it. Only arrived yesterday, but really really nice, well put together. But what makes this quite nice is who has signed it in here. As you can see that it says "Amazing Memories," Philip and Andrew Oliver. So, yep, the what are they called again? <laughs> the Oliver twins. Yeah, these guys were responsible for the Dizzy uh, franchise. And with the book, I got this little uh, fridge magnet, which is actually Dizzy. So that's that's quite nice. Excuse me. So yeah, delighted with that. That's it guys, that is it, yep, um, I hope you have a nice weekend, hope you enjoy watching the video, um, if you've got any comments, again, any questions for next week, please pop them below, go and check out Kevin's, uh, check out his site, um, you know, you'll find it entertaining, but please give smaller guys a help up, I'm not a big channel at all, I could do, I would love, I would appreciate any shout outs, um, as anybody would, but uh, yeah, do let's do our bit and help the smaller channels because you know it's all about our community and the more of us that put out this kind of stuff the better as far as I'm concerned so anyway guys please feel free to like comment and subscribe I'm always really grateful to all your uh, support that you, you give me um, and very lastly thank you very much for watching